Hi, this is Chris Chrysostom, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to create a new job in Jenkins that connects to a GitHub project, does some automated builds, and shows some results. Anyway, let's get started. I have Jenkins installed on my development system, and you can see that I have some stuff here already, but we're not so interested in those because we want to know how to do a new job. So over here in the top left corner, there is a link for new job. I'll go ahead and click on that. And name my project is temperature, but since this is for this demo, I'll just call it temp demo. I'm going to do a little bit of a cheat here. As you can see, we could just do a freestyle software project, which is probably what your first one is going to be. You can do, every, do all the configuration by hand. But since time is short, I'm going to copy this from my existing project which is named Temperature, and Jenkins was kind enough to bring that up for me. All right, click OK. Um, as you can see, we have a project name, description to help explain to us what our project's about. Uh, in this case, I do know that this is a GitHub project, so I go ahead and give the, uh, the, you know, the link here to my project on GitHub. I kind of have a bunch of other parameters, uh, probably the next important one for developers is to be aware of what JDK they're going to do their build with if it's Java and mine is Java based so I'll just leave it at the default that works just fine and the next important thing to fill out is this section called source code management um, this is the information that is required by Jenkins to know how to communicate with uh, my source code repository. As you can see here, we do have choices. You can choose from CVS, Git, uh, Subversion, and Synergy. Of course, none. None sometimes is, you know, sometimes we don't want to be, uh, or we don't need to have our jobs communicating with the repository all the time. Uh, in this case, I do. So I select a Git, and as you can see, I provided my, uh, my address, or the URL, to my Git project. And the next thing we care about uh, is this section called Build Triggers. Um, probably the interest, you, and right here where you can see I'm checked off a build periodically, and this is simply telling us that uh, at 1.13 a.m. of every morning to go ahead and do a build, or to poll the SCM, and polling means we check the repository for any source code changes, and if there is a change, go ahead and do the build. So I went ahead and checked that one off. And we have an entry here, which what I'm going to do is drop this help box down to explain what all these fields mean. Now what I want to do is we want to build this every three minutes. So I need to change this entry to this value. As you can see, the star slash three means, you know, divide the hour up into every three minutes. That's what you we have here on this little note. And putting a star in the next field means, you know, every hour of the day. Do it like that. So for the duration of this demo, uh, Jenkins is going to check my GitHub repository every three minutes. Now down here is a, the meat of a Jenkins job. Here are the build steps that we need to have Jenkins go through. As you can see in this example, I have three already set up. Uh, this first one demonstrates that you can execute uh, command line commands that allow one to uh, you know, configure your system um, for any localized uh, directory names and things like that. So that's what's going on here. As you can see, I'm actually changing the name of a file to another properties file and this will allow the build to take place without problems. The um, next step is simply to invoke ant and to choose the default target in my ant file. And that default target will actually, you know, do a compile, build artifacts, but it won't run tests. And that's what my next step is. We're going to run the tests. Okay. And one thing that's very handy about Jenkins and makes it really powerful is that once the build and the tests are complete, um, there's all kinds of ways to communicate with users. And the first of them that you can see I've checked off here 
it says archive the artifacts. What this does is when a project completes successfully, Jenkins will create a permalink to all the artifacts that are defined in this uh, string here. And that's really handy for when you know you just want to get the latest build of a project, and you don't want to get all the source code and all that stuff. But you do you do want the uh, either the executable or in this case a WAR file. You can go right to the Jenkins project page and click on it, and you'll be able to download whatever you want. Uh, next here, you see I have checked off publish JUnit test results, and the reason why I do that is I want to monitor how my testing is going. So if I have any unit tests that fail, I want to be aware of that. And by checking this off, Jenkins will create a nice graphical interface to let you, you know, see how your tests are doing. Uh, there's a number of ways for Jenkins to notify you of build failures or even build success. And here you can see I've checked off email notification, which is probably the easiest one to set up. And I have my email address and is, uh, you know, now here I'm having it telling me to send an email for every unstable build. So once I'm happy with all my configuration, I can go ahead and save the project. Now at this point, Jenkins is going to check that source code repository every three minutes to see if anything has changed. Um, but because there's nothing here right now, I'm going to go ahead and click Build Now, which will give us an idea of what's, you know, what state the project is in at this time. You see this little icon, and this icon, when you click on it, shows you the command line output, which is really handy. Uh, here you can see the build, build did, did fail. If we scroll up, what we can see happening is that one of the test cases failed. I don't know. This error here is kind of interesting. This, uh, this is just telling me that my my free SMTP server <laughs> is no longer able to send messages for the day. We can ignore this for today's demonstration because uh, I've been setting this up. I think I've been sending a lot more emails and this free software is uh, set up to do. But we have an error here. Now one thing that is handy, we don't have to go to the console output to see errors like that. If we just kind of go back to the project page or the job page, we can see that there is a latest test result link with in parentheses says there's one failure. So let's go ahead and click on that. And when we do, we can see that one of my tests, test cell CS2 Kelvin, failed. And if actually we click on that, we can actually see the reason. And of course, what happened is, oh, well, there was a problem. We expect one value, but got another one. So that means I have a problem with my source code. So as a developer who wants to kind of keep the build in good shape, I will see the failure and quickly go back to my source code and figure out what happened. Uh, the test that failed was this one. So my expected result was different than my, uh, you know, what I wanted than the actual. Uh, I know that this code here, it's going to this conversion impl class. I come over and take a look at it. I see, yes, indeed, I have it returning just uh, you know some random value, which is nonsense. Now, this is for a demo, so I'll just kind of comment out the correct code and or the incorrect code and uncomment the correct code. This should work, but to double check myself, I should run my tests. Aha, all my tests pass. I'm very happy with that. So let's get this checked in the GitHub. So if we do our status on Git, we can see that I do have a modified file. It's not added into the staging area. We'll do that right now. We'll go ahead and commit this. And of course, to see the magic, we need to push our changes to GitHub. Now, once that's done, we should probably kind of take a look at GitHub. 
here's the project. Let's see if uh, let's see if my changes really did happen. And uh, it's looking like, yep, here's my list of commits. Fix problem and demo. That was me. We can actually click on it. Take a look. Look at all the neat uh, GitHub features. Yes, there is a change. Now, while we're waiting to see if Jenkins will actually detect that change, I can go back and take a look at some of these other projects to give you guys an idea of what Jenkins is able to monitor. You know, as you can see on the left-hand side, we have this build history. Very handy to kind of look at that. If you see that there's lots of successes, like you see here, and suddenly a failure, um, yeah, you know right where to go to figure out what happened. Now we knew this failed, so we can click on the log to figure out what's going on. And if I read this error carefully, you can see in this particular case, it's looking like there is a system-wide problem where some patches were not installed into my client software for my SCM, which in this case is Synergy. Some other interesting things you can look at is a uh, build time trend. Now here you can say over the last handful handful of builds, we kind of range from you know very little time, a few seconds, nine sec, four seconds, nine seconds, to up to 12 minutes. Of course, where we have short build times is where we had our failures. So probably what's more realistic is take a look at these peaks and take a look at the valleys here and get a, an, a, an average of what's going on. This helps you determine whether your machine is capable of you know, doing the builds in a timely way. Um, as you can see there is a timeline here that you can adjust and you can kind of move this dial and kind of see where things are. A bunch of builds here. If you're interested in something you just kind of click on it and you get some information. Other interesting things is that we have a test result trend. This counts up the number of total tests that were run and whatever is in blue is what succeeded. Let's go take a look at our demo project and see what happened here. Aha! It finished. As you can see here, looks like something detected a change in the source code. As you can see, we can see here's my commit click on the detail and you can even see my name the commit number so pretty much we've got uh, and also we have a link right to github which is really handy about that github plugin okay uh, what other things did we see there I could bring to your attention we actually have a trend now first build we did remember there was that one failure uh, but now we only have zero failures, all three tests pass. So we get to see a nice little chart here to give us an idea of how the testing went. Again, we do have a link to an artifact. Here's our successful artifact. If I click on that, I have the ability just to download that file, just like you're seeing right there. Okay, well this has demonstrated a successful creation of a new project in Jenkins or a new job is what they sometimes call it. As you can see we can set up a, a job to recognize a change in source code. Uh, you have to give it some configuration information about your source code repository, some instructions about how to do the build, and some instructions for what to do after the build is done such as display your test results and, uh, and also create links to your artifacts such as war files and executables. Anyway, thank you very much for listening.